Good morning, Facebook. Happy Thursday. This is Keelan coming at you. And <clears throat> today I want to talk about vulnerability and loss. So let's get right into it. Today marks the one year anniversary of my mom passing away. Um, it was not expected because you never really want to um, expect, you know, the passing of a parent or a family member. So, um, you know, talking about it always helps. And after a year, you know, the little slice in my heart that, that cracked a little bit, you know, um, has healed little by little. And what I wanted to do today was really share with you guys how I was able to take a really, really sad, heavy moment in my life and um, turn it into something really powerful. So last year on this date, I had just come home from my 20 year high school reunion, which was an amazing time. And um, I got a call from my godmother who was in the delivery room when I was born, telling me the thing that you don't ever want to hear, that my um, mom had passed away. And you know, when you hear those things like that, the world stops, right? Your heart stops, you go, I, I went into panic mode. And then I just completely broke down. And I called my brother and I was fairly hysterical on the phone. Um, and you know, it, it's one of those like surreal, surreal moments. And you know, I, I flew to Florida and you know, of course I had support coming in and it was just like, I remember being on the airplane, just sobbing in the middle seat, you know, cause I bought the ticket like a couple hours beforehand and the flight attendant even was like, you know, are you okay? And I just, I went in inward and when, by the time I got to Florida, I had had, um, so many people reach out to me. And they said, you know, just stay strong. You know, you got to be strong. And there was never, ever a moment of like, I can't be strong. Like, it was like, yes, I, I've got this. And um, now I have to look at life in a whole completely different way. Which is hard, right? But, you know, I wrote about it. I journaled about it. And what I found really, really helpful is that I threw myself into my creativity. And I had already been working on using my creativity to um, replace the addictions that I had had, smoking and drinking. So my mom, Mary Jane, actually passed away on my 60th day of sobriety. So today I am celebrating a year and 60 days. So when I look at all of those pieces, I just always, get to think about the deep connections that I made after her passing of friends of hers that I remember from my childhood. Um, and then taking that creativity and I put myself on a 90 day challenge and I, you know, I found old photos of us and I wrote poems and I wrote letters to her and I started drawing and the videos that you guys see me posting now with Lady Liberty is actually a direct result, um, from that 90 day challenge. So I guess I call it kind of like turning pain into creativity because the reality is we all experience loss and we all get to grieve. And what I also found really, really helpful was talking about it and not making it this thing that like is so shocking that like I had to, I couldn't move or couldn't do anything. You know, I was already grieving my own um, demons, really letting them go. And um, I, I lost a lot of other women figures in my life that last year. Uh, so it's really interesting creating the Statue of Liberty is like this beacon of hope and light and this very strong, powerful woman and losing, you know, the, the one woman who gave me life and all of that. So as I said, you know, we get to take, take really, really hard lessons in life and, and really hard experiences and we get to level up because at that moment I realized, okay, I, I don't have that guiding light anymore. So now how can I 
step into a more mature position and help those around me and support those around me. And I did that by just leading by example and, you know, feeding that inner child and living those dreams that I always talked about. Right. Um, and through connection again, you know, I learned so many things about my mom after she passed away. Things that like I kind of knew, but really, you know, had never taken the time to discuss with her or she didn't feel comfortable sharing them with me. And by, you know, going through the past, I could just see who this woman was, you know, in a completely different way and connecting with her old friends and even just going through, you know, paper. She, <laughs> she kept every piece of paper from my school between kindergarten and my first year in college, every report card, a lot of newsletters. So anyone I went to like elementary and high school with, I probably have something from like you know, our school. And I just love that about her. Like she was a bit of like a pack rat, which I get too. Like I definitely love stuff and like, you know, pieces of paper and stuff like that. But she was so organized about it and it was there waiting for me. And I talk about all this because what I've learned that I want to share with you guys is that every moment is precious and, um, we don't know when things are going to alter. Things might get flipped upside down. And um, I didn't have the greatest relationship with my mom. And I made the declaration that day, actually, that I was going to repair it. And she got the final word, which was very Mary Jane of her. But I get to keep learning from her. And I get to keep sharing her creativity and I get to be vulnerable with you guys because when we hold in that hurt and that sadness it just kind of eats away at us and even though we think that we're holding it in being strong a lot of times everyone around us can see it so I found that like just the quicker I can get it out and listen to some like punk rock music and a headbang and draw some rainbows and, um, you know, feed, feed my, my soul, my, that inner child of mine, the better I can, you know, move on with the day. So I'm really glad I'm doing this now because it's really, um, it's really about just being able to celebrate her as opposed to, you know, just getting so caught up in the sadness. Um, I don't regret, I don't believe in that, but I do know that I should have called her more, right? Um, I had made her a collage for Christmas that I never sent to her. <laughs> I hang it over my desk downstairs as a reminder of my procrastination. And, you know, my message to you guys is, and I gave you all a mission earlier this week. I said, um, you know, call someone that is close to you, connect with them and ask them some questions about their childhood. You know, if you haven't done that, I highly encourage you to do it because there's those of us out there that can't. I can't call my mom. And I really would have liked to ask her more questions before she left. So when we get to make that connection, it makes their day. Whether you're an older, seasoned member of the community or younger, you know, we're all, we're all sometimes... I feel like in this state of like waiting, you know, I'm waiting for their call. I know, I know there's several people. My mom was one of them that every time I called, she would pick up right away. And even if she was busy, she'd say, Hey, hang on. I, I can't talk to you right now. And I'm like, mom, just like, leave, like I can leave a message. Don't worry about it. And she just always picked up cause she was always there. So call your parents or call your kids. You know, we all get caught up and keeping that connection alive um, is way more important than like who's right and who's, you know, well, he doesn't call me, I don't, blah, blah, blah. If you want to talk to them, just, just call them or text them or whatever. It's going to make their day and it's going to make your day. So, <sighs> thank you guys for watching because this is, this is definitely a hard one. The other thing that I'll invite you guys to do before I let you go today is yesterday, 
I talked about your inner child and, you know, what did you want to be when you were five or ten? Did you want to be an astronaut? Did you want to be an oil um, driller, underwater driller? Did you want to be, um, I don't know, a ballerina? Did you want to work in a chocolate factory? Whatever. Today I ask you to feed that inner child. Do something that just you know, nudges that and respects that, that past memory. Um, because again, it's going to make your day. And when we hold all of that in us and pretend that it's not there, we, we, the community, we see it. So when you can just release it and let it out, you're going to see a world of difference. I promise you. So that said, I'm going to get on with my day. I hope this was helpful to you guys. It was super helpful to me, so thank you so much. I'm going to go listen to some Rolling Stones because that's what Mary Jane loved. She took me to see them when I was eight years old at Shea Stadium. And these are fly glasses that I found, and I wear them in utter respect of my mom, Mary Jane Clark. May she rest in peace. And all of you guys have a great day. Your hugs for now. Bye.